Here's the question. Welcome back to Hardball, incidentally. Are we witnessing the fall of Christianity in America? According to a new Newsweek poll, 62% of Americans consider the United States a Christian nation. That's down from 69% during the tail end of the Bush presidency last year. And a whopping 68% say religion is losing its influence in American life. Ken Blackwell is with the Family Research Council, and Christopher Hitchens is a Vanity Fair columnist and the author of the must-read, God is Not Great, which has just come out in paperback. Christopher, let's start with you. Let me ask you a question. What does it mean, if anything, when people refer to the United States of America as a Christian nation? It's literally a meaningless statement. I mean, the Constitution quite deliberately forbids all mention of God. Well, I should say omits all mention of God, let alone of Jesus. And the, though the Declaration of Independence mentions a creator, it very specifically doesn't say that this creator intervenes. Most of the people who wrote the Declaration were deists, not theists. It's true to say the majority of believers in America are Christian, but that's a banal fact. Many of them, I know from going and debating with them on my book tour, when you go to their churches, are full themselves of doubt. In other words, people who've responded saying they're Christian are very full of doubt and skepticism. And the figure you don't mention, but perhaps I could introduce it, is that um, perhaps as many as 16% of people now identify as having no faith of any kind, and that's double what it was a decade ago. It's the fastest growing uh, group in the United States. Ken so Blackwell, yes, there's, a, there's a, real, a real crisis for faith in this country now. Ken Blackwell, a, well, A, off of what Christopher, uh, what Christopher just said, is there a crisis of faith in this country? Uh, do you doubt at all that this is a Christian nation? No, I, I really don't doubt that. Uh, the, if you look at the precepts uh, that the, the foundation is built on, it is a, a nation that does not have a naked public square, but one that is built on a, a moral foundation. Now, I, look, I think it's very clear... It doesn't make it Christian. That it, well, that, ...that it ebbs and flows uh, in our 232-year history. Uh, but from George Washington and Abraham Lincoln to our latter-day presidents, uh, there has been a fundamental understanding that it is that moral foundation uh, based on Judeo-Christian uh, precepts. Christopher wrong, Hitchin I'm afraid. It's just flat-out wrong. It's based on what Thomas Jefferson called a wall of separation between politics and religion. When the people of... Well, um, well, of, of Danbury, when the Baptists, of, such to say, of Danbury, Connecticut, wrote to him asking for protection, they were asking for protection from whom, Mr. Blackwell? Do you remember? Well, listen. Well, from let, the let, Congregationalists let me, let me, of Danbury, Connecticut, who didn't me. consider them to be real Americans. Christopher, can I have a word in edgewise? By you know, all means. There is, a separ there is a separation of church and state. There is not a separation of faith and politics. And there has never been the presumption uh, that we run our day-to-day -day lives uh, through a faithless prism uh, when we make our decisions. We're not told that we have to leave our faith uh, at the public square's edge. So it is just flat-out nonsense to suggest uh, that this country was built on anything other than an understanding of Judeo-Christian principles and precepts uh, that give us the moral foundation that allows free market enterprise and the primacy of the individual in our political system, not you the primacy of the state. You well, uh, can Chris, search in vain through the First Amendment of the Constitution to find any such reference. So you could, why don't you try checking out Thomas Jefferson's version of the New Testament, for example, uh, where he cuts, Chris, out, Chris, he cuts Chris, out all references to the divinity of Jesus? Christopher, let me, let, me, let me just say to you that in the Declaration of Independence, uh, you made reference to it. It says, we hold these truths to be self-evident. So we don't have to be the erudite that you are to understand a basic, uh, a basic precept that our, our, our country is built on a set of universal truths, that all of us are created equal, that we are endowed by our creator, yeah, that our rights, our human rights, don't come from government. They come doesn't make from it, our So you're being, very, you're being very stubborn. This does not say Christian. <laughs> At any point, it doesn't even imply it. The person who put in the word self-evident on that committee was Benjamin Franklin, who was undoubtedly an atheist. The, the main uh, drafter okay. of, the, of the main drafter of the, of the declaration, <laughs> Thomas Jefferson, was by no means a Christian. George uh, uh, Washington let, let, wouldn't let, take communion. <laughs> uh, it's all let true. Me just ask you, let me just ask you, Christopher. Do you think that the, the, the founders that, that, and the pilgrims were not Christians? The so, pilgrims so were Christians. If we're, talking about, if, if, we're, if we're talking about 
historical accuracy, let's let's be let's be forthright. You know it, and I know it. Yeah, but the, in this, yeah, in this no, the country, pilgrims, say, the pilgrims are not the founders, my dear sir. I'm not, I'm, I, Christopher, I'm not going to let you bogart me. Let me just say this: that it. Well, I, you're just going to keep believe, talking. I, I, I believe that you have a constant constitutional right to be theologically wrong. And I will defend I didn't your require right your permission. I didn't require I, will, I, I didn't require write, your permission. I will defend your That's right the whole to point. be theologically I, I will I will defend your right to be theologically wrong. But Actually, I Actually I don't have a constitutional right to that. I, I will not histor I, I abandon a historical uh, fact and that is that this country is built on a moral foundation that is framed by Judeo-Christian principles. M Mr. Black, the pilgrims, the pilgrims and the founders just are not the same. <laughs> it, uh, uh, the, the Spanish uh, uh, arrivals uh, also were Christian, although they were Catholic, before yeah. there was a United States of America. The United States of America's founding documents are secular. If you, if you don't know that, you don't know anything. Let, let's, let's, update it. let's update it a bit. Uh, Mr. Blackwell, let me ask you, do you think over the course of the last 10 years or so, the injection of so many uh, preachers, let's say, ministers into politics, uh, from, largely from the right-hand side of the dial, and on the left-hand side of the dial, so many Catholics uh, becoming greatly upset with the sexual abuse scandal in the Catholic Church, do you think that has damaged people of faith in this country. Let's not use the word Christian. Do you think people have less faith in their, in their religious institutions today as a result of the injection of too many public people and too many public events, sordid events, into the body politic? Michael, let, let's, let's be clear that over our 232 year history, the influence of faith uh, in our day-to-day -day lives have ebbed and flowed. And the reality is, is that in 1981, uh, everybody was saying that the church was irrelevant, Christianity was dead, and we then saw 25 years of an influential church and an expansion of faith. This, this country of Name ours... Name one person who Michael, said that this, in 1981. This, 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 excuse me. This, this, this country Name of one ours, person who said that it, in 1981. And aren't you going to have even a shot at uh, answering there, the question? Excuse me. There, there, you know, there, there, there were newspaper articles, Christopher, and you and I can come back and I'll, I'll wave them in front of you, put them under your nose. But the fact of the matter is, is that even the, the latest articles on this issue Made it, has made it clear that we've, we've been at a low ebb before and, and we will come back. And I, I'll, I'll just tell you what W.E. Archer used to say. I'll answer Sometimes the question it if you give me a chance. It, 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 might, it, it might take a crucified church to bring a crucified Christ into the eyes uh, into the view of the eyes of the world. Okay, so that, don't, don't, don't tell me that <laughs> last just word, because we're Hitchens. in a struggle. Okay, that, that, all right, uh, then, then uh, let me just, <laughs> I, I, I don't mind answering your question, Mr. Barnacle. Um, yes, sir. John, Meacham, John Meacham's very thoughtful article, which is the one that has brought us together today, I think does show that there's a, there's a decline in certainty among those who claim to be of faith, and I, I think we can all probably agree on that. Um, the one thing he didn't mention that I think he should have done or should have stressed more is another very important salient recent change, namely our worst enemy in the world, the one that most seeks to destroy us, is very obviously a faith-based one. And when people look around the world and they see the amount of theocratic bullying and sabotage going on and murder and, and, and uh, sadism uh, conducted by the parties of God, it's not as simple as it used to be when, when the right wing could say, well, our enemy is godless communism. Now our enemy is the most godly uh, imaginable group. Christopher Hitchens, God is Not Great, out in paperback. Ken Blackwell, thanks very much. We appreciate it.